Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. We're doing it, guys. The 1956 election. Do we still like Ike? That is the question. And it's a rematch, baby, between Ike and Adelai Stevenson, the former now governor of Illinois. So let's go to the ticker tape and see what we can find out about the election of 1956. Giddy up from the way. Let's go get her done. It's a wipeout, guys, again. This time, Dwight Eisenhower is going to do it with even a little bit more bang. 457 electoral votes for Dwight Eisenhower and the Republicans, only 73 for the Democrat Adlai Stevenson. And you can see, again, it's only a few of those southern states that the Democrats are still picking up. That's the old Democratic South. And I don't think that they're voting for Adlai for his liberal roots. That's probably for sure. But this time, we have Louisiana, the first time since uh, they went for Rutherford B. Hayes in 1870. Six, they're going to vote Republican. And of course, they're taking Tennessee, they're taking Florida, they're taking Texas, they're taking a whole bunch of those southern states as the electoral map is shifting and the Republicans are starting to find their base down south. And the Democrats are going to soon repick up that New Deal coalition base up in the north. But in terms of popular vote, it's 35 and a half million votes for Dwight Eisenhower, only 26 million votes for the Democrat. Eisenhower is going to pick up 41 states, only seven states go for the Democrats. And of course, in 1960, we're going to add Alaska and Hawaii. Alaska had a primary that year, but they're not states yet, but they're coming to the party really, really soon. So it's a huge wipeout, like we've said. Let's take a quick look at the Republican and the Democratic candidates, and then we're going to take a look at the campaign, and we should be able to wrap this one up pretty quickly. Ike for president, Ike for president, Ike for president, Ike for president. You like Ike, I like Ike. He wasn't as sure about that Eisenhower was going to run for a second term. During his first term, he had a major heart attack, so there were major health concerns, but he is going to get a clean bill of health in 1956, which is going to help him tremendously during this campaign. And he didn't campaign really traveling across the country. Ike is really going to adopt a media strategy this time. Television is going to be the main kind of vehicle to drive advertisement and all of that jazz. The only real kind of disturbance is whether Richard Nixon is going to stay on the ticket. Eisenhower, not the big biggest Dick fan in the whole wide world. He did offer Nixon a Secretary of Defense job if he would step down from the vice presidency, but Richard Nixon had tremendous support from the Republican Party. He was a fierce campaigner, raised a lot of money for candidates who are now coming to his defense, so he's going to stay on the ticket. So we have Eisenhower looking a little bit healthier than we thought he was. We have Nixon still on the ticket, young and campaigning, the Cold War warrior. Now let's look at the Democrats. <laughs> It's a to you and think to me, just go out and vote it. We got ourselves a fight for the Democratic ticket nomination in 1956. Adlai Stevenson, of course, he's back. He wants the nomination, but he's not going to run unopposed. Estes Kefauver, who is his vice president choice in 1952, is going to run a very strong campaign, especially early in the primary season. He won New Hampshire. He beat Stevenson in Minnesota, and then Stevenson, realizing he was in trouble, decided he had a debate. Estes, and he did that in Florida. It's actually the first televised presidential candidate debate in American history. And after that, Stevenson won Florida like 52 to 48 percent. But as primaries drag on, you need more money. And Estes just didn't have the cashola. So after Stevenson wraps up the California primary, he's pretty much going to ride himself into that nomination. There was another candidate that was mentioned that was New York Governor Averell Harriman, who had the backing of Harry Truman. But it's too late for him. So Stevenson is going to take the nomination. And then Stevenson decided to turn the vice presidential choice over to the delegates. And after a hard-fought battle between John F. Kennedy and Estes Kefauver, Estes Kefauver makes his move and wins that vice presidential nomination. But John F. Kennedy is not far behind. And of course, JFK, the young senator from Massachusetts, is going to be back in 1960. So we have ourselves a rematch. We have Dwight Eisenhower, the very popular first-term incumbent president, and Adelaide Stevenson, like I said, is going to make a second run for it. So let's make a second run for it. It truly is a rematch, but Eisenhower is going to have a couple more pluses during this election run, and that namely is his incumbency. He ended the Korean War. The economy is doing pretty well. He's a very popular president, and even though he made some controversial moves like sending the National Guard down to Little Rock during the segregation crisis, that's actually going to win him a lot of votes. He won 40 percent of the African-American vote that year. That's the last time the Republicans are going to take any sizable 
equal percentage from the African American vote. But civil rights really doesn't become a topic of conversation. Lots of things are going on. But Adelaide Stevenson, even though he's a northerner and he's much more liberal than Dwight Eisenhower probably when it comes to these things, he still is very remindful of that solid South, of those Democrats from the good old days, if you know what I mean. Sorry if that accent was offensive to anybody. And he doesn't want to lose their votes, so he's not going for that. And that's probably going to drive down his numbers in terms of the liberals in the North and minorities in the North and out West. But the real uh, context of this debate is still the Cold War. And Stevenson's main platform is that he wants to negotiate with the Soviet Union. He wants a ban on some of the nuclear testing that is going on. And Dwight Eisenhower is fighting him on that, even though Dwight Eisenhower is going to do that down the road. But a lot of the campaign ads kind of centered itself around the Cold War and how Ike was a much safer bet. You can see that Eisenhower is playing up his success in the Korean War and keeping ourselves out of conflict, but at the same time containing communism around the world. Here's a quick ad. With wars simmering all around the world, during the past four years, President Eisenhower has kept this black headline off the front pages of our newspapers because he knows at first hand the terror and misery of war. The National Citizens for Eisenhower Nixon have presented this message to all thinking voters, regardless of party affiliation. It doesn't help Stevenson that there are two major Cold War events that occur right before the election. This is the Suez Canal, where Western powers are kind of uh, sweeping into Egypt to control the canal. And we also have the Soviet Union invading Hungary after a Hungarian uprising. But in both of these conflicts, the United States manages to keep themselves out of this, but at the same time kind of appearing to be the warriors that are trying to contain communism. So this is going to be very successful for Eisenhower. There's also a strong push for the woman vote. Women are again going to go for Eisenhower in large number. A lot of Eisenhower's ads directly focus themselves on the women vote. Here's a really quick ad. This year there are 54 million women eligible to vote. Two and a half million more women than men. Enough to decide the whole election. And as November 6th draws near, you women are doing a lot of thinking about a lot of important things. You want to be as sure as you can that you will all go on living together in our present happiness and prosperity. The women of our country swept Dwight D. Eisenhower into office four years ago. They will probably decide the election this time. And they like Ike. The Democrats, a lot of their ads are targeting the very popular President Eisenhower, trying to make it look like he's breaking promises and that he's not honest and trustworthy. And that's just not going to work with the American people. You could see a quick Democratic ad here where Estes Kefauver, the vice presidential nominee, makes a direct pitch to the American people. How's that again, General? In the 1952 campaign, the general complained about the cost of living. He promised his television audience. The people can afford less butter, less fruit. Less bread, less milk. Yes, it's time for a change. This is Estes Kefauver. The general's promise to bring down prices was another broken promise. The general promised they change for the better, and we got shortchanged for the worse. Think it through. So Stevenson and the Democrats attack Eisenhower. They go personal. These are probably the first television ads that are negative ads in the history of American political theater. It's just not going to work. People like Eisenhower too much. I like Ike. It's still kind of the mantra of the Republican Party, and it's working. The Democrats are also proposing an increase, or at least the defense of the New Deal against these Hooverite Republicans. And that argument's not going to work because Eisenhower is a moderate Eastern establishment Republican who is proposing we maintain the New Deal, that we we do not um, decrease it, if anything, maybe some more smart spending habits. Stevenson is also calling for an all-volunteer army ending the draft. And again, at the height of the Cold War going on, that's not going to fly with the American people. There's just too much fear that there could be another um, type of conflict with the Soviet Union. We need to be prepared. So let's take a look at the electoral map one more time. We can see down south that that Democratic South, like we talked about before, is breaking up. The Republicans haven't completely realign those Southern white Democratic voters. That's going to be Richard Nixon's job when he runs first in 1960, but really in 1968 with the Republican Southern strategy, talking about law and order. And in the sense, some people would say playing dog whistle politics with race. And they're going to recapture those voters down South as new Republican voters. And the Democrats are going to start finding their base in the Northeast and out West. We also have a faithless elector in this election. A faithless elector is somebody 
somebody who follows their heart when it comes to casting their electoral vote. The Constitution does not mandate that an elector has to follow the popular vote, but you didn't know that. So we have an Alabama delegate who's going to cast their vote for another Democrat, Walter Jones, an avid segregationist. So this is what we have, guys, the 1956 election. Make sure that you check out all of the other elections that we've done. We've completed the 20th century. You can click right there and zip through the internets to go find the favoritest election that you can find. If you haven't subscribed to Hip Use History, you can hit that red button right there and that'll take you to the main subscription page where you can sign up for fun and funky and free lectures so giddy up for the learning one more time guys thanks for watching we always say it where attention goes energy flows and we'll see you guys next time that you press my buttons